PSVR 2 is about to be supported on PC thanks to this adapter. Given PC gamers a new headset option and given PSVR 2 owners the temptation to jump over to Steam VR to access a vast library of VR titles that are either not available on PSVR 2 or are yet to arrive on the platform natively. That's if they're lucky enough to have a gaming PC that can run it. I wanted to do a series of videos talking about some of these games, particularly games that are still planned or at least rumored to be coming to PSVR 2 natively, but that you can jump into straight away on PC if you get this adapter. And I want to start it off with my most anticipated title. It's a game I've been wanting to play on a PSVR headset since it was released back in 2020. And once I get the adapter, my ways will finally come to an end. That game is, of course, Phasmophobia. Now, if you're a PSVR 2 owner who only has a PS5 for virtual reality gaming, then you'll need to wait until Halloween to get your hands on this. But those on PC VR have been enjoying this unique game for years. And I want to put the emphasis on how unique this game really is because it can be easy to look at Phasmophobia at a glance and mistake us for just another VR indie horror game, of which there are already many even on PSVR 2. But that is not the case here. You have never played a game like this on a PSVR headset. The first thing that you'll find unusual about Phasmophobia is that despite being a psychological horror game, it's built around co-op for you and up to three friends for a total of four players. Though you can also play it solo if you want. In normal circumstances, adding co-op to a horror game might lessen the horror aspects of it. Removing the isolation you might often feel in horror games and decreasing the tension because your pals are beside you and you feel that there's safety in numbers. Yet Phasmophobia manages to retain its tension and keep you on the edge of your seat. How does it do that? Well, let's talk first about the gameplay of Phasmophobia. What do you actually do in the game? You'll be playing as your own ghost hunter, where you'll be sent to a location to investigate alleged paranormal activity. There are 13 locations so far, ranging from small maps like a residential property to more larger ones like a high school. Your job is not to go there and exercise a demon or blast ghouls with a shotgun. Instead, you need to figure out which type of entity is actually haunting the location because it's a detective game, really. There's a massive list of 24 different ghost types that it could be, including the Irish Banshee, the Japanese Yokai and the Christian Demon, each with their own tales that you'll need to learn to pay close attention to in order to successfully identify the spares so that you can get paid. Now with such a large pool of ghosts to pull from at random for each contract, you can see how each round can feel unique. Now this is compounded further by the fact that each ghost can have its own personality type. Some are very active and quick to reveal themselves to the player. Others can be very shy, making it difficult for the player to determine what it is if it isn't doing anything and thus requiring them to be more attuned to what is happening around them. But while you won't have guns to blast ghosts away, you will still have plenty of tools at your disposal. As you progress in the game, you'll earn cash which you can spend on gear. The more gear you have at your disposal, the better you'll become at identifying spirits. Each piece of equipment serves its own purpose. An EMF meter can be used to detect if asparagus is nearby. A thermometer can be used to detect drops in temperature, useful for identifying the room in the map in which the ghost dwells most often. A UV light can be used to detect ghostly fingerprints on doors and whatnot. There are many tools at your disposal and each piece of gear has a tier two and a tier three version as well that can be unlocked later on for even more utility. Each ghost type has its own set of tales or evidence that it can be identified by. So for example, if you find UV fingerprints, detect orbs on a camcorder, and you see a manifestation when using the DOTS projector, then you can enter these things into your journal and through a process of elimination, you'll know it's a banshee. Now that sounds simple enough, but it won't be quite that straightforward. On top of the creepy atmosphere and paranormal events that you'll be witnessing, like doors opening and closing, objects being flung around the room, etc., these spirits will enter a hunting stage where they will actively try to kill the player or your teammates. If you die, you'll be forced to enter a spectating mode where you can no longer speak to your living teammates. 
But as a survivor, you have to deal with the fact that your numbers are beginning to dwindle and the tension increases. But co-op isn't the only unique aspect of Phasmophobia. It also cleverly utilizes voice recognition. One of the items you can buy is called a spirit box, basically a radio that you can use to communicate with some types of spirits. You do this by actually asking questions into your microphone and certain questions will get a response. This can then be used as evidence, but it doesn't stop there. Ghosts can listen into your mic at all times and can react to your voice outside of spirit box usage. So for example, during a hunt phase, the ghost can be drawn to a player making noise. So you should try to remain quiet if you want to stay alive. You'll also be told the name of the spares at the start of each round. So saying that name or certain other phrases can cause the spare to react in a variety of ways, including angriness. There's also a chance that anytime you play around that cursed objects will be on the map. Now these include things like Ouija boards and monkey paws, both of which can be interacted with by using voice recognition, either to ask the Ouija board questions or to make wishes with the monkey paw. But here's where things will get a little bit controversial regarding playing this on PC viewer versus waiting on the PS viewer 2 version. The developers Kinetic Games have said that the console version of Phasmophobia currently doesn't support voice recognition features. Instead, you'll have to interact with these objects using text prompts as if it's Detroit Become Human or something like that. In my opinion, it'd be a huge shame if they can't get that feature running on consoles. If not at launch, then at least in a future update as it's hugely immersive. So while I was tempted to wait for the native PSVR 2 version of Phasmophobia because I wouldn't be surprised if it feels better to play there, perhaps with better optimization since it's just one piece of hardware, but almost certainly with immersive haptic feedback and HDR. The lack of voice recognition made it easy for me to buy the Steam version, however. It also doesn't hurt that it was only 14 euro to buy, but that price is expected to jump up to 20 euro slash dollars by the time the console version releases. So that disappointment aside, I still think it has the potential to be one of the best games on PS4 2. Keep in mind this is a hybrid title, originally envisioned as a VR game, but laser made flat also. Not only that, VR and flat players can play together online with cross-play between platforms. You can play with any other Phasmophobia player out there, so there's no need to worry about low player counts. I just checked and there's currently 18,000 people playing us on Steam alone right now. At this point, I should mention I've never actually played this game myself. I've just been following its progress throughout early access and praying for a PS viewer version. I also don't want to act like it's a perfect game or anything like that. Like I said, it's early access still with many changes yet to come in before it becomes complete. It can be accurately described as janky, especially in virtual reality, and things like the character models of the ghosts themselves, I believe are straight Unity assets from the store. But with a long roadmap filled with new things to look forward to, I'm sure those shortcomings will be addressed or at least improved by Kinetic Games, even if they are a small indie studio. Phasmophobia is a surprisingly deep game. I've barely touched on the cursed objects, the various difficulty settings, including custom difficulty, the weekly challenges, or even the sanity system, which further adds to that depth. But the key takeaway I'd like to impart on any PSV or two owners wondering about Phasmophobia is just that. You can put hundreds or thousands of hours into this game alone. And while maybe the jump scares won't be as effective by that point, the depth of the core gameplay itself is engaging enough to keep you coming back for more. I can't wait to get my hands on the PC adapter next week when it comes out and finally begin streaming Phasmophobia on this channel and bring an end my four year ways for Phasmophobia on PSVR. So stick around on the channel if you want to see Phasmophobia PSVR 2 content. And that's it for this video. But before I go, I want to thank my channel members whose names are on screen as we speak. They are the following Muzz, Dead Eye Dan, No One Knows, Plank71, Esports Commentator for Hire, Deej, The Pumpkin Patch Kid, Pete Hawkins, the Governor Viewer, Crumb, Superfly AF, Edify Till I Die, Lone Wolf Viewer, Aced, Mr. 777, and Geza. Thank you very much for that support. It's greatly appreciated. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Please stay nice and moist.